Hi, this is Harris Carmichael, and welcome to the Pathology section of Hematology and Oncology. The next few slides review the different ways red blood cells can appear on a smear. It is important to be able to visually recognize abnormal histology and link it to the correct diagnosis. Some of these questions should be easy points, so don't be intimidated by long questions, as they often contain giveaway clues that you should be on the lookout for. One good tip, particularly for long questions, is to skip to the end of the question, read the last line first to find out what the author was asking, and then go back up and read the question stem in its entirety. Let's try an example. A four-year-old boy develops jaundice after taking TMP-SMX for a UTI. A blood smear shows these cells in abundance. What is the inheritance pattern of this child's disease? Well, if you know that these cells are degmocytes, aka bite cells, and are common in G6PD deficiency, and that these patients are particularly susceptible to sulfa drugs, then you're already halfway to your answer. Next, the test will commonly test inheritance patterns for the inheritable diseases. A good tip for most of these inheritance patterns is that diseases caused by mutations in enzymes tend to be autosomal recessive while diseases caused by mutations in structural proteins tend to be autosomal dominant. This is because if one allele for an enzyme produces a defective product, you still have the other half of the enzymes to carry out the work. However, let's say you have a structural protein that is defective in your cell wall. Well, you can't overcome this by the other half of the proteins in the cell wall being normal, because still half of the proteins are altering the structure of that wall. This is a great trick that can assist you in a question where you're unsure of the inheritance pattern and you're trying to decide between the two options of autosomal recessive and autosomal dominant. Unfortunately, there is one catch to this wonderful trick, and it's why I said it works for most inheritance patterns. And that's that diseases like G6PD deficiency are X-linked recessive. So in males, it only takes one mutation of enzymes to elicit disease because there's only one allele. Some of these questions may seem tricky at first, but they're all about these buzzwords and buzz pictures in RBC histology. Hematology is a classic place for these buzz pictures, and you'll find lots of pictures here that are classic for a single disease, so recognizing them will really help you ace your hemonc section. These spiky cells are called acanthocytes, and can be found in liver disease and A-beta lipoproteinemia, aka cholesterol dysregulation. This is because of abnormal lipoproteins building in the cell wall, deforming the classic biconcave disc shape. Basophilic stippling is a pathologic RBC form and is most commonly associated with lead poisoning. This cell is a schistocyte. Schistocytes are also called helmet cells because of their shape, and they are fragmented parts of RBCs that form in microangiopathic diseases like DIC, HUS, TTP, and traumatic hemolysis like you might see with a mechanical valve. Here is an example of a question incorporating the histology of these cells. A 24-year-old previously healthy woman in the final stages of labor suddenly becomes short of breath and has a profuse blood loss per her vagina. A peripheral smear notes these cells. What is the diagnosis? The schistocytes plus profuse blood loss in a woman in labor, point to disseminated intravascular coagulation. These cells are fragmented as RBCs try and squeeze past a thrombus in DIC. Another important pathologic RBC variant is the target cell. Due to an increase in surface area to volume ratio, the normal area of central pallor is filled in with extra membrane, making the RBCs look like targets. Diseases in which you'd see target cells can be remembered with the mnemonic HALT, when you reach the target, standing for hemoglobin C disease, asplenia, liver disease, and thalassemia. And what is this last cell type? That is a sickle cell from a patient with sickle cell disease. Heinz bodies are inclusions in RBCs that are composed of denatured hemoglobin. Heinz bodies are found in disease states where there is oxidative damage to hemoglobin, which includes alpha thalassemia or G6PD deficiency. 
Of the two, G6PD deficiency is the more commonly tested with Heinz bodies. And as a memory tool, instead of Heinz 57, I've always remembered Heinz G6PD. Heinz bodies only show up after a crystal violet stain, which can be helpful to know because if the question stem talks about doing this particular stain on a blood smear, they can be hinting at the diagnosis. Do you remember the bite cells we spoke of earlier? Well, interestingly, Heinz bodies are actually very closely linked to these cells. The characteristic bite cell actually has this shape because when these cells pass through the spleen, RBCs with Heinz bodies are bitten by splenic macrophages. The macrophage just tears off a piece of the cell that includes the Heinz body. So it looks as if these cells have had a chunk taken out or a bite taken out of them. Howell Jolly bodies are clusters of DNA found in circulating RBCs and appear as basophilic nuclear remnants. During maturation in the bone marrow, RBCs normally expel their nuclei, but sometimes a little bit of DNA remains as a Howell Jolly body. Since most people have normal spleens, these bodies get removed and are not seen on peripheral smears. However, if your spleen is dysfunctional or non-functional, as in a patient with a splenectomy, Howell Jolly bodies will remain. What prominent hematologic disease would cause a splenic pathology and display these Howell Jolly bodies? Well, one important one would be the autosplenectomy seen in sickle cell anemia. So to summarize, Howell Jolly bodies don't indicate that something is necessarily wrong with your blood cells, but can be an indicator that something is wrong with your spleen.